If you're a fan of getting really technical with your controller inputs and getting those combinations just right, or bashing your head into the controller, from uppercuts to low kicks, this is our collection of top 10 fighting games. At number 10 is Virtual Fighter 2. With its breakthrough graphics, revolutionary gameplay, and vast range of maps and character options, Virtual Fighter 2 became the best-selling game on the Sega Saturn and is one of the best arcade games of the 90s. At number 9 is Dead or Alive 4. With its high-definition graphics, tournament-style fighting with online capabilities, and the most sophisticated countering system, Dead or Alive 4 requires the utmost patience and timing from any gamer. At number 8 is BlazBlue Calamity Trigger. The first game in the BlazBlue series, BlazBlue is a 2D fighter with an intriguing story and excellent gameplay, with characters that interact with each other mid-battle, such as Ragnar the Blood Edge hurling obscenity at his enemies. At number 7 is Soul Calibur 4. The fourth weapon-based fighting game from Namco's Soul Calibur series adds online capabilities and the iconic characters Darth Vader and Master Yoda from the Star Wars franchise to add more depth and mystery to an already enthralling series. At number 6 is Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3. The vast range of characters from the popular Marvel and Capcom universes make Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 a memorable experience with fan favourites such as Marvel's Deadpool and Trish from the Devil May Cry series. And number 5 is Tekken Dark Resurrection. The handheld version of Namco's highly esteemed fighting series adds two new characters, multiplayer verses, and more levels from the arcade version with climate and time effects. And number 4 is Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Ever wanted to see Link beat up Star Fox? Or Mario fight Pikachu? This is the only game which you can have such battles. With a character pool of 39 iconic Nintendo characters, you can have your favourite characters duel to find out who is superior. And number 3 is Bushido Blade. The majority of the gameplay is based around third-person battles between two opponents. Unlike most fighting games, this one doesn't use health bars or time limits, and doesn't require multiple hits because most hits are deadly. And number 2 is Mortal Kombat 2. Most notable for its extremely violent gameplay, Mortal Kombat 2 is chock full of hours of blood spilling, flesh shredding, bone crushing fun. A variety of characters and moves keep the game from getting dull, and the large range of fatalities add to the game's bloody carnage. And the number one fighting game is... Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. The most hardcore game in the franchise's history, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike requires the utmost finesse from even the most veteran of fighting players. Hey guys, and welcome to Cologne, Germany for Gamescom 2014. I'm here with a special guest, Chris, the uh, producer and cameraman. Yes, I make this bloody show. <laughs> yeah, someone has to, because I'm not doing it. Um, we're at Gamescom. This is the first time we've been to Germany, let alone Gamescom, and what, what do you think? What's, your, what's the first thing that like jumps out at you? It's amazing, this show, it's, it's a different vibe to E3. It's a public show. I don't know if you can see, there's about 100,000 people behind us. There is li there's literally a wall of people behind yeah, us. It's amazing. Like, yeah. Germany's amazing. It's our first time being here. It's the first time being at Gamescom, like you say. It's just fantastic. It's really awesome because um, at E3, a lot of things was, were just like either teased or like there was just a trailer. Here, a lot more of it is actually playable. Yeah, you're right. Because we're coming up much closer to Christmas and release season, a lot more of these games are a lot further along. They've got much more to show, much more that you can play, and much more that the public can play. It's not a trade show. Like, 
yeah, the public gets a chance to come in and see some of these games for themselves. It's great. All right, uh, I think it's time to wade through the crowd, try and <laughs> plow our way through to get to some, uh, some of these games. What do yeah. you reckon? Let's do it. Let's do it. Guys, I'm back in Cologne, Germany for Gamescom 2014. As you can see behind me, we have the Alien Isolation booth. I, it's no secret that I'm a bit of wimp, a bit of a wimp when it comes to horror games. I'm going to check it out for you guys anyway. Uh, as soon as my, I find my blindfold, I'm actually going to play it, and we're also going to do an interview afterwards. So let's check it out. So I'm here in Cologne, Germany at Gamescom 2014 with Gary, lead desi uh, game designer on Alien Isolation. How are you going? I'm very good today. How are you doing? Yeah, it's the uh, last day of Gamescom. I'm sure you're. Quite tired. No, no, I'm, I'm here tomorrow as well. Oh, you are? Wow. I don't actually have to work tomorrow though, so I get to check out the whole show. So That's awesome. It's going to be cool. Um, so we're here to talk about Alien Isolation, and um, there's been a lot of games based on the Alien universe that has come out. However, yours stands out in the way that you approach what aliens like are and like how you interact with them. Can you tell tell uh, us a bit about like what the alien is in the game and like how does it work? Like well. What we always wanted to do with this game, and it's the very first almost concept that we had, was to make a single alien scary again. Yeah. Because all of the games we played, none of them felt like that feeling in the first film, where there was an entire crew who were just trying to get rid of one alien, and they're in a real tricky situation. They don't have pulse rifles or M56 smart guns. They're just trying to survive. And it seemed like that was, you know, that film in many ways was the first survival horror in sci-fi. It's like, well. Surely that would translate well to a game, and yeah. you know we understand how easy it would be to translate, you know, shooting an aliens to to video games. It lends itself very naturally to that. But the idea of it being survival and horror was like, well, no one has done that yet, and we, that's the game we've always wanted to play. And especially after the release of things like Colonial Marines, where people on forums and stuff are saying we want the alien to be scary again, we were saying, well, that's that's brilliant because that's what we're doing. Yeah. So it's it's been really really good. And yeah, I heard like you were more basing it on the first Aliens film as yeah. opposed to other people who are doing Aliens or yes, AVP yeah. or something like that. Um, one thing that like jumps out as well is um, just there's so many like the the kind of environment that you're in, and not only just the environment, but just um, say, for instance, when you have the uh, the motion tracker, you have the motion tracker out in one hand, and you can see the screen, but like the the your vision goes blurry and like yeah, kind of the, right, the yeah. background, and then you can also like change your kind of like perspective, so you can look where you're going, but yeah. you can't see the motion. That's tracker. right. Yeah. <laughs> um, what kind of other like touches have you done like that that kind of help you like well that kind of heighten the, the the atmosphere in the game well one of the things is if you collect like weapons like you know like a pistol or like the flamethrower and things like that we never have the on the screen the whole time yeah because you know a game isn't a shooter and we don't want to give the impression that it was so to use a weapon you have to bring it out and aim it so you've got an actual choice to do that and if you do that to a group of humans for example they react to it yeah and the same with the alien it starts to adapt to what you're doing and you know kind of change its behavior according to the weapons and your actions so it, it went right through to the kind of lo-fi sci-fi mechanic of the world that everything had to be gritty and you know handheld and yeah. like the environment wasn't going to help you and we didn't want to put any like hologram markers in the world or any like you know direction things that would kind of spoil the visual yeah. aesthetic of it because yeah. we wanted it to look and feel like that first film the entire time so things like your objective marker is a kind of like basic compass that's around the edge of the motion tracker and when we first put it in it was it was quite shocking to realize that when the dot of the alien lined up with the dot that was leading you where you needed to go, you kind of went, oh no. It's like, if two dots on the screen can yeah. make me terrified, we must be doing something right. Yeah. Um, you said the alien kind of adapts to like what, what's happening and like uh, you, you can't actually defeat the alien. It's you, well, you can survive against the alien. Yeah. That's, that's your goal. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't try and kill it because it will kill you. <laughs> so what you are don't the... have any tools or any big weapons that are going to be able to kill it. So your your general approach to the alien should be to try and make a plan of how you're going to survive and then see what happens because you can use the environment to cause like distractions. Yeah. There's a really simple thing where we have a button on most of the doors where you hit it and it closes it very quickly behind you. So if you hear the roar of the alien and he's in line of sight, you hit that button, close it, and you've got a couple of seconds to find somewhere to hide. So if you can break that line of sight, it's, it's almost like playing a multiplayer game where someone's after you. Yeah. If, you can, if they, you can lose them for a few seconds and they don't know where you've gone, it's that kind of thing. 
Um, also, the alien isn't the only kind of enemy in the game, is it? That's correct, yes. There are also androids in the game and humans. Yeah. But it's, it's very... It's, you know, people are quick to react when you say you have other enemies because they go, oh, okay, so it's all shooting. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 actually the experience with the androids and the humans is very similar to the alien. Where it's all about being stealthy and careful and trying to evade them, but I think it's great that when you see an android or you know, a group of humans, your first worry is if they make noise, it's going to bring down the alien. And that's a really interesting kind of concept for a player to mess with. It's kind of like a uh, like a hierarchy of enemies, like you yes. know, what in, yeah. food chain, alien, <laughs> humans. Yeah. Um, well, it looks really awesome. Um, I'm going to have to play it. Like I, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of a, a wimp when it comes to these kind of things. But I'm going to make sure that I play this game because I really like you know the concept of kind of like hiding from it and stuff like yeah. that. So um, just lastly, can you tell us when and where we can get Alien Isolation? Yeah, sure. It's coming out from the 7th of October this year. Uh, on Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 3, and also on PC. Awesome, thank you very much. Thank you.